so in this little project I will be making uh, one of these it is actually uh, for a British Raden cannon, it's a 30mm cannon and this is, well you call it a muzzle brake or something like that but basically it was a deflector to keep the, um, the muzzle flame away from the driver who was sat on the CRVTs right below the exit of the cannon so these were added onto the barrel to ensure that the, the driver didn't get his little, um, pretty face singed, so we say. I start in CAD by creating the main tube. Then I add an offset plane, draw the larger circle, which is the end of the muzzle, um, and the wall thickness tapers down as the muzzle gets larger, so I'm unable to shell the component out. So what I do is I loft the top and bottom profiles together, add another plane, and I put in a threaded hole This I later deleted, but it really was not necessary. Um, I add a taper to the top end, and I just finish off by just smoothing out a few bits and pieces. Then I'll stick it in Cura, and I set out my print settings. And I've gotten into the habit of virtually creating the print layers and checking them. Um, luckily I did this and spotted a, a line you can see that in yellow. Um, this was created when I smoothed out um, an edge that I shouldn't have done on the inside of the tube. Uh, you can see this later on. You can also see the hollow matrix inside the 3D print. Quite an interesting process if you don't know much about 3D printing. This is the fault line inside the muzzle and you can see where I've curved off the edge of the main tube so I'll highlight it and uh, delete that which I've now found a way of looking at in a cut section in the CAD software so here's a quick view on the 3D printer in action I won't change too much because it just makes it really funny noises so this is the we call it a muzzle. Uh, it's going to be cast in aluminium, as the originals were. And there's two parts to this. This is the actual core and mould. So, because obviously it's hollow, I need to make a, a core for this. So this is the pattern. Basically, I've um, used this and put in a couple of caps either end so that will make up the shape that goes in the moulding box the core itself for the middle bit is made up with this it's the shape of the internal components and the external caps that you saw on the last part so when this is made up this hopefully should drop into the sand and there should be enough strength in its length to then mould. I'll be pouring it at an angle so the component will be laying at that sort of angle within the sand so I'll be lifting the moulding box up at an angle pouring from the bottom to the top. So the first project to get these two dusted up, put back together, I will be doing it, filling the core with a, a tube as well, which I will be taking out afterwards, hopefully. I say hopefully. But that will give you a nice air vent passage in the middle. So when I use them for the first time, I've sanded it, just giving it a very quick sand, this one here I've given a sand, I haven't done these bits yet because I've just glued them in but very quick sand, I mean this was literally two minutes of sanding 
just to take the worst of the um, ribbing off. Not that there's ever particularly much, but it just helps in the moulding process just to remove bits and pieces like this from the sand. These will probably be alright, but I might give them a quick sand down when the glue's all gone off. So after they've been sanded, parting powder, liberally put on, and then literally I rub it in. Did you like the word rubbing? Rub it in. Then what I do is I actually wipe it off with a brush. Really go to town and clean off as much as I can. And then I powder them again, and that's before I even use them. You find that the moulds get better the more you use them. So the first time is generally the worst, but I found parting powder in them twice with a rub in between helps a huge amount. Right, so there you go. Been vigorously rubbed off. We were. And then what I'll do is I'll cover that with parting powder and do it again. And she should be ready to use. All done, ready to use. Giving them a light powdering again and a very light brush off. Now I'll assemble these and get them ready to use. The reason why there's only three studs is because I couldn't find any more, basically. I had made an extra set of holes, didn't need them in the end. The clamping force at either end is just perfect for this. And as far as accuracy and alignment goes, where you can see how I had to put it together, it's quite difficult. Come on, get on there. Right, there we go, don't need to do that too tight. There we are, ready. So here again, this is the tube that goes in the middle. Just put some passing powder on it. It's the first time it's been used, so I'm just gonna rub it in. That's not rude, is it? Then I'll dust it again, and then that'll be ready for use. So there we have that, ready to go. Right, got my sand. I've got 0.5% of molasses mixed into it already. And I've got my sodium silicate here, which is 2 to 5%. I have said before that um, I've got a chemical that sets this, or it sets on its own with CO2, which is what I tend to use. The chemical is, I've not really had a great deal of success with it, but again, my usage of cores has been very limited up until recently.
Okay, let's um, put some carbon dioxide through that then. I'm just going to hold this against the end. It's just a rough old bit of wood. Not so much to seal it off, just to give it some sort of stop. This is going to be a little bit tricky this one. And I think I'm going to have to do it the other way. Slowly and gently. Needs a bit of a touch up just there. Not too bad. So there we go, that's destined for the oven. See how we get on in there.